Your dreams are killing you. Every single night, your brain decides to shut you off. Once you've entered REM, you become paralyzed. You are no longer in control of your body, even if you do wake up. And for those whose bodies aren't paralyzed, the sleepwalkers, no, you aren't in control either. Dreams are something science is barely capable of explaining. It is one of humanity's biggest mysteries. So tonight, remember to cherish your life because when you wake up in the morning, you may find yourself dead. Or alive, waiting for <laughs> breakfast. Either or. I want to I, I wanna start off the video by saying that sleep is actually a very vulnerable thing to do. I feel like sleep is the most vulnerable thing you can do in your entire life because once you're asleep, you're allowing your body to Wrong. shut off. Wrong. You don't think so? Wrong. I think it is. Pooping in a middle school restroom or high school. <laughs> That's the worst. Don't get caught in a middle school restroom. Well, hopefully if you're an adult, you're not in there. No, 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 no. When you're a kid. When you sleep, you're allowing your body to be paralyzed. You're allowing your, your brain to take over. Do you think you are your brain? No. No, your brain has a brain of its own, honestly. Wrong. Because you're, you're not in control of what happens to you in your sleep. And let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. How many celebrities do you know that have died in their sleep? How many celebrities? Unexpectedly. Okay. How many celebrities have you seen using the restroom? None. <laughs> I look so white. I don't know if this is usable. It's usable. It's going to have to be. Okay, you're cutting that out. What? You're cutting that out. <laughs> what? You're cutting that out. I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> Do you know who Bob Saget is? I know the name. There's going to be a new Danny Tanner. Somebody who everybody likes and they want to be around. Bob Saget is the dad from Full House. Do you remember that show? Yes. It's the dawn of a new man. Yeah, natural. Spontaneous. Well, did you know that he passed away? No. He passed away two years ago. He's alive. No, he's, he's gone. He's dead. Mm -hmm. He passed away two years ago. His death is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. What? So I have not heard anyone talk about Bob Saget's death. Someone's hiding something about his death. The original cause of death that was made known to the public was that he had a stroke or a heart attack while he slept. But that is wrong. And that's what some people think that his death was. But that's completely false. That is not correct. He didn't die from a heart attack or a stroke. He was a very, not, not the most youngest person in the world, obviously, but he wasn't old. He didn't, I don't think he had any pre-existing conditions or anything like that. A month before his death, he, he had a podcast. And on his podcast, he joined with his wife and they were talking. And in the middle of the podcast, he says, you're going to find me dead nope. in my bed soon. So I don't have long to live. I'm going to be found dead in bed. That's what he said. That's crazy. He said that. And then after his reaction is kind of like, like if he meant it, you mm -hmm. know, it was a joke, but it looked like he meant it. And guess what happened a month later? I killed him. He, no, you oh. did Stop. You're Sorry. gonna get the cops on us. I didn't do it. On us? I guess you helped me. He passed away in his sleep. And later, the autopsy report showed that it wasn't a heart attack. It wasn't a stroke. He sustained really serious injuries on the back of his head. Yes. And do you know what the police said after that? <laughs> they said, oh, it's just... He must have slipped and fell on his head or hid his head somewhere, fell asleep and thought nothing of it. It was internal bleeding and that's how he passed away. What if the wife did it? Dude, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, she had to. And then after, oh, in that clip, she says, Yeah, you I better know. watch out. I'm going to be found dead in bed. You better watch out. Uh, oh, yeah. Or something like that. Lock her up. <laughs> you got it. Allegedly. No, this is true. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> and then I, I read, first of all, New York Times article. New York Times is reliable. It's a reliable source. I don't know about all that. You seen the people in New York? Dude, 
Uh, we're not talking about people in New York. We are. No, it's we're not. The New York Post. Okay, okay. So in the New York, what is it called? Times. Oh, New York Times article. <laughs> Scratch the post. I said Times. <laughs> In the New York Times article, it literally said those head traumas, like some experts say that that was not caused from a folly. Mm. It was not, it was injuries that they would see in patients that have flown out of their cars from a car accident, fallen off like a two story building. Jesus Christ. Or someone hit them in the back of the head with a bat. Yeah. Dude, Bob Saget did not die from a heart attack or a stroke or from falling, like, he could on an axe. No, 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 no. But those injuries are from, like, a fall from a two-story building. That's right. From a ground fall? They pushed a it, trip? They pushed him um, out the window. No one saw that. But that's what the, the, the cops are saying. The cops are saying that he fell. This is going on for way too long. Because mm. this is not what the video is about. But I'm just saying, I'm just prefacing that sleep is a very vulnerable thing that you could do because you don't know what's gonna happen in your sleep. You get a heart check, a stroke, someone can kill you. Sleepwalkers, if you sleepwalk, you are not safe, dude. Even though you are not like paralyzed during REM sleep, dude, how, there's so many, there's been documented cases of sleepwalkers accidentally killing themselves or killing somebody else. Nightmares cause heart attacks. Night oh yeah, dude, nightmares can have you tripping. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. I don't know if you guys remember, but that, that story of, uh, did you put that in? Where, where I said my grandma's dream, where my grandma had her head cut off and put duct tape around it. Did you, you didn't put that in there? That No, that was from the last video that so I- So you did put that in there, or you did not? No, that was the last video. This is like the 14th recording of this same video. Oh. It was that video. Oh my God, I woke up crying like maybe <laughs> two or three times from nightmares. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> nightmares, dreams, dude, you are not safe. Uh -huh. You will be dead. Now that we're really into the video, dreams, what are they? Why are they there? Three scientific explanations, although science... What? Say that again? Scientific. <laughs> <laughs> scientific? Is that not right? No. <laughs> no. What is it then? Scientific. <laughs> scientific. Three scientific explanations about dreams. Science cannot explain it. Scientists cannot agree on why we dream. This is why I don't trust science. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so one, it is a simple byproduct of the neural processing going on in your brain while you sleep. Two, dreams are where we fulfill our unconscious desires. Mm -hmm. Three, they serve the purpose of like preparing us for a dangerous event in the future. Those are the three main ones that scientists sort of kind of agree on, but then again, they don't agree on. Now we're gonna go into other the explanations. The community never agrees on nothing. Huh? The science community never agrees on nothing. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Don't trust them. Wake up. <laughs> Some people believe that when you dream, you enter a parallel universe. So when we originally recorded this video, I told you about a woman who stayed in her dream for 40 years, right? But I ended up falling asleep and finding myself in a dream. I was pregnant and I could feel the baby in my belly. I could feel everything. But after a while, I'm starting to realize that this dream is going on for quite a long time. and. It's getting later in the day, later in the day, to the point where it's like time to kind of go to bed. And so I go to bed expecting that when I wake up in the morning, I'll just be woken up from my dream. I'll be back in my bed in Wellington. But that doesn't happen. I wake up and I'm still in the dream. It's crazy because that sounds like she entered a parallel universe of her and her son being a single mother. Wild. So does science, because over here in this channel, we don't like to theorize without science, right? Yes, we do. I do. <laughs> it's the best kind of theories. <laughs> Anyways, does science really explain parallel universes? Are parallel universes really possible? There's this man. His name is Brian Greene. Brian Greene said that parallel universes are absolutely possible. And it's not a matter of if you believe in these conspiracy theories or not. It's a matter of if you believe in the math and the physics. Physics and math, they explain how parallel universes 
are not only possible, they have to exist. I'll explain it with the deck of cards, just like he explained it. If you believe in the science of it all, you will believe that the universe is infinite. It'll go on forever. It does not end. Infinite is a very hard number to actually visualize in your head. It's never ending. There are only a finite amount of configurations, molecule configurations that can occur based on physics, based on math, okay? So if you think about it as a deck of cards, the deck of cards being the molecules and molecule structures, the because deck of cards, you know, there's a certain amount of deck of cards and it's finite. If you shuffle those deck of cards, <laughs> that's what I did. Do it again. No. <laughs> Do it differently. Do it differently. No. Do it like this. If you shuffle a deck of cards for an infinite amount of times, eventually there's bound to be a duplicate. That is the same exact thing when it comes to the universe. The universe is infinite. Eventually, the same molecule structures are gonna structurize in certain ways and there's gonna be duplicates of worlds. There's gonna be duplicates of you. There's gonna be duplicates of your life. So if you believe in science, you have to believe in parallel universes. So besides the proof of parallel universes, is there any proof that dreams are parallel universes? Yes, because the evil Dr. Strange said, Dr. Strange is not real. Dr. There is Strange. no proof. But, but, maybe you don't enter a parallel universe when you dream, but maybe you do enter a different dimension. You may think that's the same thing, but it's not. I probably... <laughs> one dimension. What paper. is that? Paper. What is a one dimension? Paper. Drawing on paper. Oh my god, you said this last time. What is it? One dimensional? Oh, it's a line. Just one line. Yeah, straight. Two dimensional is what? Us. No, we're not two dimensional. It's paper. It's like drawings on paper. Yeah, it's drawing on a paper. Three dimensional is us. Us. What is four dimensional? You. No, oh. what? Every single time we go up a dimension, a different side is added, right? So we have a line. That's the one dimension. The second dimension would be a line like this and then a line up. The third dimension is when we add depth. So now we're thinking more of like a cube. We're adding another side to the dimension. So just thinking like that, the fourth dimension would have to add another side. But where do we add the side? Maybe we cannot ask. see the side. We can't see it. <laughs> nope. Think about it like this. Think about a two-dimensional figure. They, they can't see us. They are not aware of a third dimension. They are not aware of a third side because they can't simply, they simply cannot go that way. They can only go this way and this way. They cannot go in the different dimension like us they wouldn't be able to us three-dimensional creatures cannot see the fourth dimension we are not capable we don't even understand where that side would be but four-dimensional creatures do understand that side they live in the fourth dimension we just simply cannot see them but they can see us god that sounds a lot like heaven right like god when we dream, what if we enter the fourth dimension? Everyone always says, if you lucid dream, do not look into the mirror. Do not ask for the time. Maybe they are telling you not to ask for the time and not to look into the mirror. One, because if you look into the mirror, you're gonna see a monster. You're not gonna recognize yourself. A four dimensional creature would be able to see through us. They would be able to see our organs and our bones and blood and all these nasty things that we cannot see. They are able to walk through walls and in the fourth dimension, they are everywhere at once. So time doesn't really like fit into the fourth dimension, which is why if you ask for the time in a dream, they can't tell you what time it is unless they lie. Maybe we're walking into the fourth dimension without even knowing it. So some people think that dreams are messages from God 
or the gods. The Greeks thought that the dreams were messages from the gods, and in the Bible, it actually supports the idea that dreams are messages from God. Because Joseph, when he was like, dude, did Mary cheat on me? Wow. <laughs> he got a dream of an angel, and that was a message from God. So the Bible supports the idea that dreams can be messages from God. But some people think they're not messages from anything good. Some people believe that dreams can be messages from demons, the devil. Maybe what I believe is that all of these spirits are in the fourth dimension, a dimension that we cannot enter unless we're in a, we're in a dream. And these fourth dimensional beings maybe are the spiritual world. Maybe that is why some people get messages from demons while others get messages from God. Or why some people get visited by their past relatives that they wouldn't otherwise see. Oh, like the paranormal activity stuff. Mm -hmm. Like ghosts and all that extra stuff. But some people think that dreams actually predict the future. <clears throat> some of these so-called psychics say that they are predicting the future from their dreams. And, dude, Dreams are crazy because you can get inspired from a dream. Vincent van Gogh dreamed some of his paintings before they went on the canvas. Predicting the future in a dream. Abraham Lincoln. This man predicted his own death. Dude, okay, so three days, three freaking days prior to his assassination, he told his friend and his wife about a dream that he had. He dreamed that he found a covered corpse in the White House. He asked the soldiers, hey, who is that laying on the floor covered? Imagine just walking into your <laughs> office and you just see a dead body like, what's the janitor doing, man? And then they answered with, it is the president. So that was his dream. The day of his assassination, he told the members of his cabinet that he had a dream. So this is a different dream now. He had a reoccurring dream of sailing across an unknown body of water at great speeds. And he said that he always had this dream before nearly every single great and important event of the war. So he always had this dream before something crazy happened, right? That same day, he was assassinated. Stop, Stop you crazy. Regardless, he was predicting the future from a dream. He was in a jet ski. Abraham Lincoln with that shirt. <laughs> Put me in there. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't the only person to predict his own death from a dream. There are plenty of artists and you can find so many, but we're gonna be talking about Left Eye, AKA Lisa Lopez from the group TLC. She was really famous. She was really, really famous. She unfortunately passed away. Here's what happened. Unfortunately, she was killed in a car crash, right? She was driving, she lost control, the car flipped over a bunch of times. It unfortunately killed her. I feel like a lot of famous people die by car crashes. A lot of people do. The thing is, two weeks prior, she was in another car crash. She wasn't driving this car though. It was her assistant. She was in the passenger side and unfortunately, a 10 year old boy like ran across the street or something and the car unfortunately hit him and struck him and killed him. This whole time she was saying she felt that a spirit was following her. This whole time, a spirit was following her and she really did feel that, like that spirit was out to kill her. She was the one that was supposed to die in that crash, not the boy. The weeks following before her death, she kept saying that this spirit was out to get her. And in a video that she recorded and posted that I had a real frightening dream last night. She said that she kept having this dream of the sun. There was a dream that she had of the sun, but it was bigger than she's ever seen it before. And he said, yeah, that's the sun. We're in trouble. <laughs> and she said it was basically the end. It was basically the end. Insinuating that it was the end for her. It was probably death. I was following her around. Two weeks later, she passed away in another car crash. The next singer that is on our list is Aaliyah. She was an R&B singer of the 2000s as well. And she was really, really famous too. She actually dated Jay-Z and illegally married R. Kelly when she was 15 years old. He was like 27. 
That's crazy, isn't it? How the fuck did we allow that? Dude, I don't know. Okay. But at the end of her life, she was dating this guy named Damon Dash. She passed away in a private jet crash. The thing is, she kept having this reoccurring dream that she said in an interview that she was having this dream where she was being followed by this person and she was being, she was so scared. She was scared for her life. And then all of a sudden she took off and started flying and soaring through the sky and she felt free and liberated, right? That's such a beautiful dream, but also at the same time, very scary. That's what inspired R. Kelly. Dude, uh, I believe I can fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The day of the crash, she went to the airport and she saw the plane and she was like, uh-uh, I'm not getting on that thing. She said she was scared of small planes. She was terrified. She had like this fear of planes. And so she saw this plane, it was too small. There was eight people that got onto the plane. There was so much equipment. It was so heavy for that small little plane, right? She said, I am not getting on that thing. I am scared. I don't want to get on the thing. She called her boyfriend and said, I do not want to get on that thing. R. Kelly? It was no, an R. Kelly. It was Damon Dash. Dash. Um, and then, and then someone gave her, this is crazy, this is crazy. Someone gave her a sleeping pill. I don't know how she took that thing. I don't know why she thought it was okay. She got a sleeping pill. She fell asleep in the back of the cab or a car, some, some sort of vehicle. She fell asleep. They carried her. She was unconscious. They carried her into the plane. She did not want to get onto that thing. Boom. It crashed and everyone on that plane passed away. It's crazy that she predicted her own death through a dream though. Last thing I want to talk about, lucid dream. Lucid dreaming is the craziest thing that anyone can do. It is also very freaking dangerous for the future. Be Look, we have so many technology, so much technology, Alexa, Siri, all these digital devices around us. They have done experiments of lucid dreaming and how crazy it can be for people to easily manipulate your mind when you are in a lucid dream. Oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah. There was a, a researching thing that was going on of people, smokers, there were smokers, right? And then while they were, they trained them to lucid dream and while they were in the sleep, they released a scent. The scent was of cigars or marijuana or something like that and then a foul smell of like rotting eggs or something of the sort by the end of the experiments they followed their what they were doing afterwards their smoking habits reduced by 30 percent even though they had no recollection of that smell or any of that that is so much better than someone trying to stop smoking from any other source so lucid dream your mind can be manipulated while you're asleep. And there's this person who went to a convention of like 400 marketing companies. And almost 80% of them said that they plan to develop some sort of something on dream engineering or sleep manipulation while advertising in the next three years. Well, they can't even leave us alone while we sleep. Dude, Crazy. this is not even a theory. It's something that they want to do. For dunk and dunk. Some researchers think that that is impossible. There are regulations on advertising and stuff like that. But other researchers are like, hey, dude, the regulations do not cover what you can do while someone is asleep. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy that they really want to infiltrate your mind while you sleep just to push their own agenda. Like, dude, you got to be so freaking greedy to push what you want. Shut up. Let me sleep. I promise you if I get a Dorito ad when I sleep, I'm going to get so mad. <laughs> I swear to God I will. Forget about advertising companies, dude. That's, That's just a waste of money, right? Waste that you can of do. Money. money is tangible, it comes and goes, whatever. Yeah, right. Um, I know, for us poor people. <laughs> that shit just goes. It goes. It doesn't come back. Anyways, but forget about advertising, right? Imagine what the government can do. Yeah, they're tripping. Dude, if you believe in the freaking Illuminati. Mm -hmm. There's so much we can talk about with the Illuminati still, baby. Y'all let me know what y'all want to hear, bro. Let me know. <laughs> Dude, sleep is dangerous. You can die from your dreams. You can predict your death in your dreams. Mm -hmm. You can talk to God in your dreams, maybe. You can. If you are religious. Or have a relationship with God. Yeah. Or, or, or demons can get you. Dude, we didn't even talk about sleep paralysis. Let's also, don't poop in a middle school bathroom <laughs> or a high school bathroom. I can't. My It's stuck well, to my pants. Pull it. It's okay, no, I don't want to rip it. One. Give me the other one. No. <laughs> Show.